On today's episode of Monday Maps, I'm going to show you how to create this battle map invasion visualization. So I got another really great opportunity to work with Johnny Harris on his most recent documentary, Uncharted Cyprus. I created a handful of animations for that documentary. It was insanely fun to work on. And this is one of the techniques I used for a lot of the animations. And I used it to not only transition like the colors of different countries to visualize them, but also to show when armies or militaries were invading parts of this island. And I was initially using like ink transition templates, like dropping them there and just using them as track mats. And then I started to create my own to really get custom looks with shape layers. So I'm gonna break down that technique that I started using step by step and show you how I put some of this together. Today's video is brought to you by Skillshare. So if you follow me on YouTube, then clearly you're a fan of both cartography and motion design. Well, Skillshare is an online community that has content focusing on both of these topics. There's a really cool class in particular from Ira Marks called Fantasy Maps, The Art of Exploring Imaginary Worlds. This course goes into the history of map symbols and icons, the fundamental elements of map design, how maps represent stories of the fantastic, how maps use metaphor, how to create map landscapes, creating symbols, icons, typography, adding texture and color to your maps. It's definitely a cool class and it's going to help me up my cartography motion design game. Skillshare is ad-free, so you can stay focused on the content, and they're always adding new premium content to the site. And the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click on the link in the video description will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare, so you can start exploring your creativity today. Okay, so I'm inside of my After Effects project. The first element I need is the island of Cyprus. I need a nice shape layer. So when I created the maps for this particular documentary, I was using a premium extension called GeoLayers 3. And I know a lot of you don't have that. So what you can do is you can go to this website, really cool website called freevectormaps.com. And I searched for uh, Cyprus. And I have this nice map of Cyprus, single color. You can, if you want to use it on commercial projects, you can simply you know, download this for $3, or you can, you know, apply the attribution and use it for free. Love this website. So I opened up uh, the Illustrator file that I have here, and I'm using an extension called Overlord just to push this over to After Effects. You can still get it over into After Effects um, as a shape layer or a shape element, but Overlord is just so dang cool. So I'm going to change the fill color here to some kind of red and... I actually have some textures in here from my last tutorial, that fantasy map. These are from Envato Elements. And I'm gonna change the blend mode of the country and just set it to multiply. Okay, so now we've got a nice start here. Essentially what I'm gonna be doing is I'm creating um, a custom alpha map that I can animate on and I can really go crazy with the edges. And what it's gonna be doing is, is gonna be, it's gonna show the edge of my invasion uh, the country that's invade or the the something that's invading it but as that transitions on it's going to reveal the edges of the country so we're going to start off with just the paper texture and then this as this animates on uh, it's going to reveal the country so we need to create the mat first i'm going to rename this texture and i'm going to color this label red so for the mat i am going to go grab the shape tool and i'm going to grab ellipse in particular doesn't really matter what color it is. I'm gonna make it white, um, but we're gonna be using the alpha information. But I, I made it white just in case I wanna you know, use it as a luma mat later or something. Now I'm gonna simply double click on this. I make sure I don't have anything else selected so it creates its own shape layer. I'll call this Invasion Edge. And I'm gonna open up the actual ellipse path and I'm gonna unlock this for size and I'll, I'll bring the size down to like 100 by 100. So now I've got this little ellipse here. So now I'm gonna grab this and bring this up here. Now this, uh, let's say the island is being invaded by the Turks. So this is a country up here. So I want the animation to start from up here and spread down. So with this selected, I'm gonna make sure that I have the actual layer selected with the anchor point of the layer. And I'm gonna move the anchor point to the top so it'll scale from here, and then I'm gonna simply rotate it a little bit. And now check this out, is this, let's just look and see as it scales. Yeah, it's scaling up this way. I can rotate that a little more. Okay, so that'll be our end position at like, let's just say two seconds for right now. And I'll bring this down to zero. Okay, so that's what it's looking like right now. Now I can simply 
go grab the Cypress layer and set the track mat to alpha mat. And now we have a transition here. Look at cool, but you know, this edge is quite boring. So it's a straight edge. I want to make it more jagged and a little bit more dynamic, a little more layered. So what we can do here is I'm going to actually turn this back on so we can see it. And I'm going to open it up. I'm going to go to the add button and I'm going to add a repeater. Okay. So now we've got this repeater and it's, uh, you can see it's repeating to the side here. So I'm going to go mess with the transformation options of the repeater. I'm fine with three copies. So it's set to three copies right now. That's perfectly fine. But I'm going to zero the position out. So they're all stacked on top of each other right now. Now I'm going to set the end opacity to zero. What that does is it, it each repeated copy is just going to go down in opacity. It's going to become more and more translucent. So as I scale these up, you can see what I'm talking about. So as it goes out, now I'm going to go back and just turn this off again. And now you can see our borders, but it's still super boring. What I want to do is I want to make, I want to start to roughen up that edge now, but I'm working with a shape layer here and not to dive too deep into this, but after effects, the render order is different when you're working with shape or vector elements compared to raster elements. So what I want to do is before I apply any effects to this, I want to pre-comp it. And um, this is so that if I apply, uh, apply effects to it um, I, and I start to scale and work in 3D, I'm going to be working with an effect called Turbulent Displace. And when you use Turbulent Displace on a shape element, the render order is a little wonky. So uh, it'll basically, if you scale up the shape layer, um, the Turbulent Displacement is not going to move along with it. So it doesn't look very good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pre-comp this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply the turbulent displace. And now you can see the edges of my shape are starting to get a little turbulent. And another thing you can see as I go here frame by frame, you can see that they're pretty dynamic. They're actually animating. They're, they're displacing a little bit. There's a bunch of different ways that I can customize the edge here. This includes the type of displacement. So I can change it to all these different types. I, and then I can mess with the amount, the size, but the biggest thing is complexity. So I'm going to crank the complexity all the way up. I think it goes to like 10. And now right there, check that out. I've already got something that's looking way cool. So if I go to preview, I'm going to bring the resolution down to like half because I doubt this is going to play at full speed. And now check that out. Okay, that's actually moving pretty fast now. So let me just take the uh, keyframes here and drag them out a little bit more. We're going to make this animation a little bit longer, um, something like five seconds. And you can see it does, a, it does a lot of the heavy lifting for us. Now as it moves, it's, uh, you know, it's just, it looks so dynamic. And I can just customize this to no end. You can see I can get some really crazy looks as I start to play with the size and the amount here and the complexity. I can just get some really really cool looks. I could go back, I could mess with the repeater, you know, make even more edges. Or I could go back in here and let's say we only want like half of the island to be invaded. So we can just scale this back so that it's only, so that it stops kind of halfway through and we're only seeing half of the island. It could be pretty cool. What's really cool about this is you can animate a few different like shape elements and then you can just quickly swap them out. You could even theoretically render out like, um, you know, you could render these out as black and white and then use them as luma mats and then you can just apply them over there. Um, in fact, what I started to do initially back when I worked on Johnny's piece called Hitler's Girlfriend, I did the World War II map animations for that. And I was using this technique to show the spread of Nazi Germany across Europe. However, for that, I was using ink transition uh, assets that I had from Envato Elements and um, and those were simple, you know, squares that I was like repositioning and working with them. And it wasn't working as well as once for this project, I started to realize I should create my own with this shape layer technique. And I could really start to, um, in this example, I just animated a simple ellipse. But if you draw your own custom shapes out with a pen tool, and then you animate those paths over time, you can get crazy customized looks. So this is a really fun technique, very customizable. I suggest you go play with it. As a last step, um, if, I, if these are looking a little too uh, 
you know, a little too fluid, what you can do is you can go in, add an adjustment layer, and then um, just add a posterized time, or as some others call it, posterized time. But if you hear someone call it posterized time, you should probably unsubscribe from them. All right, now, you know, I, I about cut that frame rate in half. It's going to look a little bit better. So this technique can be used for a bunch of different things. If you're doing like military invasions, if you're doing like zombie apocalypse, a perfect use for this would be, uh, as you've seen in those Roland Emmerich films, he's a director who did, I think, uh, uh, Day After Tomorrow, uh, 2012. You always have that scene where there's like, they bring in the scientist and he's talking to all the generals and the president. And the president's like, well, what do we got going on here? And then the scientist has this map animation that's usually beautiful. And he's saying like, here's what's going to happen in three days, in four days, in five days. And then you have this like, this map animation of all these countries being overtaken by like a, a red color. This technique would be perfect for those films. So Roland, if you're watching this, hire me for your next crappy movie. And be sure to go check out Uncharted Cypress. It's a passion project that Johnny's been wanting to put together for apparently like years now. So it's, it's really amazing. I feel honored that I got to create some maps for that project and watch him get to put that together and realize that passion. So definitely go check that out and hopefully I'll get to work on um, some future projects of the Uncharted series. All right, I'll see you in the next episode.